Hello everyone, and welcome to the next edition of the Holland Land Office Museum's Artifact Video Series. My name is Ryan Duffy, and I'm the director of the museum, and this week we're going to talk about one of the founding buildings in Batavia, and one associated with the founder of Batavia, Joseph Ellicott. So this week we're going to talk about the Ellicott Mansion, which was originally built by Joseph Ellicott and stayed in the Ellicott family into the 1850s uh, after the death of his nephew, who moved in after him. Uh, now the mansion was located uh, a little bit kitty corner across the street from the land office building that currently still stands. Uh, and it was actually the first land office in Batavia as the east wing of the building was used by Ellicott as the land office uh, and his living quarters at the time. Though it was eventually expanded upon with two other sections built uh, throughout the years. Now Ellicott started building the mansion uh, around 1802 and it was completed sometime between 1818 and 1826, as there are differing uh, dates given. Uh, but it took quite some time for it to reach its uh, final glory. Uh, now, Ellicott settled in Batavia at that time and, and built his home, but he planned on actually living in Buffalo uh, in a 100-acre plot uh, with a grand home. But when the city of Buffalo sort of changed the street plans on him, he took it as a personal affront and decided to continue building his home in Batavia and make that his permanent residence. Um, now here at the museum we have a few artifacts that came from the home or were used in the home. Uh, before I tell you some more general history about it, I'd like to show off some of those pieces. So first off we have here is the uh, Ellicott family secretary. Uh, this was constructed in the 1820s, uh, so probably was used only briefly by Joseph, but then stayed in the family well past uh, that point and would be used by the rest of the members of the family living in the house, including David Alcott Evans, uh, who took over as resident agent here in Batavia and also lived uh, in his uncle's mansion. Now it was made out of mahogany with uh, glass uh, doorways and shelves, uh, and many of these books actually uh, came from the Ellicott family or were of the time period. And we even have a little silhouette of a young Joseph Ellicott in there. Uh, but this is a very uh, unique writing desk as it has a flip down top, which actually locks up so you can keep it secure. Uh, so, but this is something that was actually used uh, by Mr. Ellicott and his uh, related family members uh, when living in the Ellicott Mansion. We also have a lot of dishware and sort of home items uh, from the Ellicott Mansion, as you can see here, including pewter plates as well as ceramic dishware, uh, to give you an idea of sort of what they used in their lifestyle as they were a wealthy family, a very wealthy family, and uh, had uh, pieces in their home that matched as such and reflected their status. Um, now some of these are actually engraved and can maybe even be traced back to Joseph Ellicott's father, Joseph Ellicott, so maybe these things were brought up uh, from their home in Maryland uh, and stayed here, uh, but these were used by several generations of the Ellicott. Now we'll go on and finish up the video by telling you the history of the building and its construction and how its use is after the Ellicotts. Joseph Ellicott began construction on his home in Batavia in 1802, and the early construction began roughly where Dellinger Avenue intersects West Main Street today. And this first building would actually be the east wing of what would be known as the Ellicott Mansion. And it served as both the home uh, for Ellicott and the land office for the land company. Now, eventually construction would be completed about 1818 or sometime thereafter with the three pieces making up the home. So it consisted of a large main building with two wings and some additions in the rear. Uh, the main building was a three-story structure and the wings were two stories. Uh, and the first floor had 10 rooms and the second story also had 10 rooms with the third floor being a finished attic with five rooms. Now the grounds matched the uh, building and its impressiveness as it was actually encompassed by Porter, Thomas, Washington, and West Main Street, so a very large city block. And to the rear of the house were actually pastures, barns, gardens, and orchards, uh, along with uh, large flower gardens and hedges uh, that worked towards the front along with some huge trees and a wooden fence. This you can all see from the picture here. But inside they also had very fine taste including an eight foot high musical clock which was actually built by Ellicott's father and this was the uh, most fascinating feature to many visitors. 
Now, after Joseph Ellicott died in 1826, the home would be passed down to his nephew, David Ellicott Evans, and the younger Ellicott would uh, live there until his death in 1850. And then it would pass out of the Ellicott family's uh, possession, as in 1852, it was bought by Ruth Beardsley Bryan, where she opened up her famous Mrs. Bryan Seminary, which was a finishing school for young ladies to uh, perfect their Victorian-era skills. Now, the school would operate out of the building until 1884, until uh, two of her students who had taken over the school decided that it was best to move it to Toledo, Ohio. And this left the Ellicott Mansion vacant for several years. Uh, by 1886, the city, uh, the village at the time, was expanding, and they were looking to include more residential areas. And one of those areas was off of West Main Street uh, in that area. And all the property around the Ellicott Mansion was purchased in 1886 by John Dellinger and John Glade and they wished to build more residential lots in that area, including Dellinger Avenue. However, the Ellicott Mansion was in the way of these plans, so in 1887, it was actually torn down and dismantled. Now, I say dismantled because there are still pieces of it that we think remaining, as uh, in time, uh, a piece was used as a uh, what we know as the East Wing, uh, was used as a carpenter shop by John Glade. Um, but we do know that uh, one piece, uh, one of the wings, uh, is probably the home at 13 Porter Avenue, though it has been turned 90 degrees, so it doesn't look nearly the same, but all the features seem to match up. So even though the Elkin Mansion in totality is gone, pieces of it still remain. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Holland Land Office Museum's Artifact video series. Uh, in case you've missed any videos in the past, you can go to our YouTube channel, Howell Land Office Museum, and check out the entire playlist. We're over 70 videos now and still growing. And as always, if you really enjoy our content, be sure to like and subscribe as it helps the channel out a little bit more, but also gets you early notice when we do release new videos. Uh, and you can also check out the other videos that are on there from some of our guest speaker series and, and other events that we've had. Uh, but as always, the best way to come and really enjoy what we've got to offer here and the artifacts that we have to show off is stop by the museum and see us and we'll be happy to share even more stories about uh, what is stored here and what is on display.